The moment is here, you can stop your search. It's Comics by Perch. Hey everybody, this is Perch. Um, <laughs> well, what do we got? Um, let's let's go to. Yeah, I've got so many mails about Dan Slot right now. I, I mean, Dan Slot and Spider Man is consuming a lot of the minds of people. Um, I I don't know but whether it's Zeb Wells what he's doing with Barry Jane. I mean, there's there's an interesting groundswell, and I think about when one more day hit and there Marvel started teasing that this is going to be a major major change, and I had a feeling of dread about it when they were promoting Spider-Man and there was a lot of people coming into the shop, like, I don't know. And it, there was this feeling of anxiety that, that, you know, it became this polarizing of it of one more day. And I would say that just, it's not the same, you know, people in email and on videos and other things, they, they tend to skew more extreme. So it's, it's not like being in a store and just seeing people are actually coming in, putting cash on the table. Um, but I do keep in touch with a lot of other shops and I, talk to the retailers and show up places. I will tell you that the volume right now of anxiety and irritation and mistrust around Spider-Man is massive. And I know at uh, what C2E2 that uh, there was that panel that uh, Zeb Wells and, and Sobolski, or was it Nick Lowe? I don't remember who was on the panel. Uh, no, Zeb, and, and they were commenting that uh, Zeb Wells made a comment that uh, he... He talked to Nick, and it wasn't clear if it was Nick, uh, Nick Lowe or Nick Spencer, but I think Nick Lowe, about his plans for Spider-Man. He was talking about how, you know, Nick basically advised Zeb that, hey, um, you know, after you do what you're about to do in Spider-Man, really in the next, you know, 30 to 45 days, um, you probably, you, you shouldn't go to conventions for a while. Because, you know, it's going to be dangerous for you, basically implying that, you know, the stuff you're going to do is so, so controversial, so toxic, it's going to, the fans are going to erupt on you. And, uh, you know, they're kind of telling you like, huh, 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 and they're both joking around and there's a lot of laughter. And uh, I, I, you know, in reality, the cons are probably the safest places to go to because the cons are filled with true believers they're filled with uh, cosplayers. They're filled with people who I think, you know, the retailers call the cons like casual comic fans, which is a weird way to think about it. If you're buying a ticket, you're a hardcore comic fan, right? But they called it uh, casual comic fans. And they call it that because in reality, you know, people do what they're going to do and it's, it's all fine. Um, so I, I think that uh, I, I don't if you, you your real danger is going to be people just stop buying the comics you you get another wave of people who just hate you forever for what you did and it did it, it actually spirals into even comic books like Venom, like other titles at marvel um fan bad will is is a terrible terrible idea it's uh it's not something you steer into and 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 uh, you know it, what always fascinates me about the publishers is how they sometimes seem enamored with the idea of pissing off the fans because they view kind of, it's like, it's like Eric, Eric Bischoff in wrestling controversy equals cash. If people are really passionate and they're really pissed off, then that's, that's good. They'll, they'll buy more. That's an old school kind of view of how, you know, products and, and business works. But the reality is that's, that's often not the case. It's, um, it's, it, it, People will go from anger to apathy very, very quickly. There's a major difference, and anyone who knows wrestling will tell you this, between real heat and cheap heat, or go-away heat, if you've ever heard those terms. So the example is, you can get somebody who comes out and just, the fans just hate that person, right? So a different time, like the NWO, when it first, when it first started, had kind of, you know, heat, real, true, red hot heat. They'd come out, they'd spray paint Rex, Lex Luger and Sting and like all this shit would go down and and it was a big deal. Um, and they got, you know, people would throw things into the ring and but, the, but people bought tickets, they gobbled them up, they bought the t-shirts, they bought the merchandise. That was real attention, real heat. And then, you know, a year later or more when you've know, got the LWO and you've got the NWO red and black and the black and white, and you've got the different factions. And then 
you know, you have Jeff Jarrett coming out trying to lead some kind of revolution. Like you, you, at some point, the real heat became go away heat or cheap heat. It's a little bit like, um, you know, when comic companies, uh, you know, promote things that nobody is going to buy, uh, it is, it, 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 you know, you get criticism, but it's like criticism where people are just mocking you. They're not actually investing anything. They're not buying it. And then you get things where the storyline is, is so controversial. When the Dark Phoenix saga came out, People didn't like the idea that Jean, Jean Grey was going to die. And, and so you had a lot of angry fans that they bought because they were hooked. You know, when, when Civil War came out, it's an even bigger example of, you know, um, people, uh, it, it, there's a police car behind me, but he's not chasing me. I've seen him chase. I'm just, I'm worried about the audio and the thing. So I'm going to pull over here and let this guy get past me. But sorry about that. This is the, the, the real life, you know, interactions we have in Perch. There you go. And he's gone. The video editing, I'm not even sure you'll hear that volume. Uh, so anyway, sorry for that little distraction. If I was a professional, I'd just edit this right out. Um, anyway, in comics, Civil War generated like people who really didn't like the idea of Iron Man and Captain America fighting each other and everything that happened. But people bought anyway. It carried over into Secret Invasion and some of the other events. People were into it. When you got to things like fear itself, it became kind of go away heat where people were just annoyed at that point with events. And it's like magic hammers coming down and Red Skull's daughter. And it's like nobody, nobody gave a fuck about that. And that's, that's the day. And he shows up in the sales. So the interesting aspect right now is the Spider Man office is pursuing this strategy of, uh, hey, this is going to really rile up the fans. And that's going to give us a bunch of attention and it's got to get a bunch of people, you know, connected and they're going to be talking about it and controversy equals cash. But the reality is I, a controversy is not going to equal cash in this point. Con a controversy is going to equal apathy. I think that uh, Spider-Man is at this moment where people are just going to stop giving a shit and for better or worse. And, and I'm not speaking for every fan. I know there's a lot of different people, different viewpoints, everything else. For better or worse, Spider-Man is intrinsically linked to Mary Jane. Those two are, I mean, they, they're just, that is the, the couple. That is the uh, happy future that everybody expects, that everybody wants. That's where the comic goes. And so, if you know, the more you play with that, the more you toy with it, it's like, it, you know, it, it's like you're, you're blowing up a balloon and you can keep blowing it, keep blowing it, keep blowing it. And you can you, you build the tension, build the tension, build the tension. But there does come a point where you've got to release some of the tension or the, the balloon's going to pop. And I think that's where, that's where the whole Spider-Man thing is right now. It's, it's at a place where the balloon's about to burst because the fans have been toyed with for so long. During Dan Slott's run, he did the will they, won't they with, with Parker and Mary Jane. And then Nick Spencer came into the picture and he, he restored them. They, you know, they're dating and Peter wants to ask her to marry him and a will they, won't they. And it looks like and a happy ending. Oh, no, there's this character coming along that is, uh, you know, going to kind of you know, haunt Spider-Man. And is he going to? No, no, they're going to get along. And at the very end of that run, it's like, hey, they're they're back together. And so Marvel diving right in with the, nope, let's twist the knife a little further. This is the trap that amateurs make, is that they realize that when you're just doing storytelling, you need to, you need to toy with your, your viewers a little bit. You need to make sure that they, 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 get, they anticipate the next moment. But if you play that game too much, you take away the tension. And if you take away the tension too often, the whole thing falls apart. And that's, that's the challenge. I think that uh, right now, the strategy they're playing has reached a breaking point. And based on the noise, I get an email, talking to retailers and other, other things. It is different this time. It is a moment in time where the, uh, the let's see what happens next is depending on the, the moves they make, is about to be replaced with fuck off forever. 
And it's it's very easy to point to a bunch of toxic fans and people on Twitter who bitch about everything and all the rest as uh, the, the you know, those are the only people who are complaining. But it turns out that, you know, most people like a happy ending. It's weird. And so you could draw out that happy ending to continue to get sales and continue to kind of play it out. But an example is Friends. So Friends is a TV show played the Ross and Rachel. Will they, won't they? Oh, no, he's interested. Now, now she's interested. But now he's available. Now he's not available. And they played this out. And then they dated for a while. And then they broke up. And they played with that for a while. But when they got to the end of the show, in the last season or two, they started to realize, legitimately started to realize that, hey, um, people are tired. They, they just kind of want to see Ross and Rachel together. They're sick of this shit. And that last season, I mean, Friends is remembered fondly and everything else, but that last season uh, suffered. You know, NBC had to hard promote the, this is the final season of Friends. And they they aggressively promoted that the show was going to end in order to keep the ratings up. But there was softness. Look at the history. There absolutely was this this people are getting sick of this uh, this toying around with this shit. So what did they do in the in the in the end of the the season in the the final episode? They're like, and they're together again because that's what you want because people expect a happy ending. Now imagine if NBC. Instead, ended that show with, ah, fuck, she's dead. We killed her. She she fell down a manhole in New York, and she's dead now, and Ross is going to be miserable forever. See you later, everybody. That, that, they would have been, been massacred in the ratings over that, and it would have hurt their other shows. It would have you know, spiraled into all kinds of things. That's... That's the danger that Marvel is in right now. They're they're playing with people's emotions, and they're, uh, they're, there's a danger. So we'll see. We'll see where it all goes. But based on your mails, uh, man, people are so, so anxious about this. And my only, I hope Marvel's paying attention to that. Thanks for listening.